I usually don't do outlines, but um, I think it would be helpful for all of you if I did outlines. So I put an outline there. And so I know it's a very small scripture, but you know, important scripture. And today we're, we're going to talk about five assurance in Christ, but most of you know this. I grew up uh, being trained uh, in uh, mission organizations. You for Christ, I knew CCC, YWAM. You probably don't know anything that I'm talking about right now, but these groups are not from church. They're based mostly in saving youth, high school, colleges, or doing missions. Um, and so my desire was, oh, the church is not doing well. You know, Korean churches, oh, they're full of fakes. I want to go to American church. So I went to American church, and finally I was in American church, but then they weren't really evangelizing. They were just kind of watching and taking care of <coughs> each other and being nice and feeding me, which was good. And then I was a Sunday school teacher, but then I decided, no, we need to evangelize and do missions. And so we started going and doing missions, but then what happens if you do missions and evangelism with other groups and not based on the church? They criticize the church and they steal all the good workers from the church. And then this is not it too. What's going on in this world? The world is supposed to have the blessing of Christ and is centered on the church, but the church is too many denominations. Too many heresies also. So, so many problems are arising. What can we do? I decided very um, earnestly, um, praying to God, God, please send me to a seminary that will do evangelism and missions. And of course, I will send to the world's greatest and biggest seminary, which sends the most missionaries in the world. Now, of course, some of you know the story, Southwestern Baptist. And I met great people. I smuggled Bible in China, smuggled money. Before the Chinese government had a super set up system for the airport, where they had x-rays and everything, I was there before the Olympics. It was huge before the Olympics. Then, before the Olympics happened in Beijing, I went in, but then the x-ray machines, which is the greatest and the newest machines, they weren't working. Only one was working. So I was one that passed by without getting my bags checked. There was one person in our group that got caught. We didn't know him. <laughs> so we abandoned him. He had to pay a fine. And all the Bibles, all the money, gone. But don't worry, majority of us, which was, you know, we were a dozen, but one out of 12, that's pretty good, right? But still, it was kind of foolish to do that. Why? I thought I was doing great things for God, but that's not it. I thought sharing the gospel to 400, hundreds of people and people accepting Christ, that was great. But that's not it too. It's really knowing Christ correctly. Christ actually gave us everything. And all you have to do is just so, be so sure. You know, uh, you can actually tell what assurance is. If you have a, I know most of you are not married. Some of you are married have children. You know what assurance is this? You know, you know, you got a wife, if you're a man, and then suddenly a baby is born. But does the baby have assurance that's, that's mom and dad? Not really. But who has the assurance that's, that's our child, right? The way she looks or he looks. Sometimes they don't, they, we blame each other when they're bad. Oh, you take after your, your wife, your, oh my, you know, the mother, right? But actually, if you go very deeply in the DNA, even their personality, everything they to do, wow. That child actually is the combination of you and your wife. My sons are like that. Sometimes not in a good way. Sometimes they act just like you or just like your wife. Why? Because and their immune system is just like yours. Bad. Really, my, my immune system is really bad. My son's immune systems are really bad. But my wife is pretty good, so it's kind of like half and half. So, wow, why are they this way? So, we have assurance. Oh, this is my child. But who gets assurance? Because we're sure already. We don't have to say, you know, you're not my son. We can say that, you're not my son. Because sometimes we get angry, you're not my son. <laughs> but we don't mean it. That's a lie. But, who gets assurance? Who needs assurance? We don't need assurance. My sons are my son. I know that a thousand percent. 
You don't even, I don't even have to have DNA check. I know it. I even seen how they grew and when they were born. I seen everything. I know why they were that way. The parents know that. But who needs assurance then? It's my sons. And so when my wife scolds them and um, you know spanks them, who they run to? Me. When I spank them and discipline, who they run to? Their mom. Right? And we both spank them, they go to their grandfather and they know Uncle and Auntie. But why? Because they have assurance. Right? But you know why Christians don't have answers? They have no assurance in Christ. They never check. <coughs> they never check if Christ is really inside of them. Uh, it's a tragedy right now, but um, our college department, I, I'm sorry to say this, but then some of you know this. But um, it's not good. One of our college students committed suicide. And this is Friday. And she was afflicted. Uh, struggling so long. It's not good to say this too, but guess what? How happy must you be or sad must you be to commit suicide? It's not a good thing. It impacts everything. So right now, college department is really sad. They're doing funerals right now for her. But you know what was wrong with people? Even if you come to church, and you may be like this right now, even if you come to church, you don't know Christ. Guess what? If you don't know Christ, you're still hit by sin, curses, disasters, hell, Satan. Even if you accepted Christ just a little bit, if you don't know and don't have assurance, guess what? That's not your current address then. If you're not sure where you're, you know my son is memorizing my wife's phone number. Why? This is my wife. This is his mother's phone. And we don't want to confuse him too much, so. And my, but the problem is my wife doesn't answer her phone very well. <laughs> but he's memorizing her number. It's a really easy number to memorize. But he's having a hard time. But why must he memorize his number? What happens if he gets lost? Why does he have to memorize where we live? Why? Why does he know my voice? Because it's his current address. It's where he's supposed to be. Why are Christians not doing well? Because they're not in Christ. It's kind of funny because uh, internet right now, uh, Facebook, uh, most of you don't receive it, but I receive almost every Facebook news and just things that happen, even spam. <laughs> like, they send this crazy thing, they, they put my name inside of those things. I never touched that thing. I was like, wow, that's so weird. But one of the news is this. In one of the Christian broadcasting systems in Korea, like thousands and thousands of people were demonstrating in front of the Christian broadcasting. You know who they were? It's, they're called the Shincheonji. They're a heresy. But they say, no, we're not heresy, we're Christian. And they do it perfectly in time. There's like in a complete like army of ants. And, wah, wah, wah. and then they're complaining, we're not heresy, right? They do that. I was like, and wow, and they do that for several days. I was like, even though they're not a heresy, wow, they're an amazing group. They are a heresy, though. You know what they do? This is why they're a heresy. If you actually look it up in any YouTube, it's very easy to find them. You know what they teach? They teach this, hey, our leader is God, Christ, and you must follow us. That's what they do everything, like, like robots. And what you have to do is this. All the churches in the world, why are they so messed up? They give the right reasons, too. They don't, they fight against each other. They don't know what they believe. We know what we believe. And they really know what they believe, we, even though it's wrong. They have one heart, whole heart. There's 24 hours, right? They're continuous. They have every answer like that. Except it's not Christ. It's not God's kingdom. It's not the Holy Spirit. Then, you know what they do? You must go inside the church, pretend to be the greatest member and rise up to the rank and take down the pastor. Right? You see that, right? You guys know this, right? This is happening in Korea and it's spreading around the world. Guess what? You go around Korean churches. Our church, I don't know if they, we have a sign like that. Maybe we do. But it says, Shincheonji is not welcome. <laughs> it really, they have those signs. Do not come in if you're Shincheonji. If we find out you're Shincheonji, that's it. <laughs> right? <laughs> but it's really bad. But CBS, the Christian Broadcasting System, they sent out a video revealing who they are. Are they happy? Then that means 
the wolf is out of its sheep clothing, right? That's what you're angry. But don't worry. If you're sure in Christ, you know why Shinjaji cannot easily come into our church? Most of our members, even though they don't enjoy Christ, they know Christ better than other Christians. But it's not about just knowing. It's having assurance. Why do we cry? Why do we tear? Why do we have conflicts? Because we have no assurance. Christ finished it all. Then, why can't you receive answers? Um, somebody I met on Friday, so smart, very cute. And she's getting older too. She's a master's student. She's going for um, a lot of things. She has a lot of hopes and goals, but she's full on education. But suddenly she quit education. And she calls me and says, Pastor Dave, or she texts me, Pastor Dave, I live now in Pundang. Well, really? And I used to help her a lot before. She goes to another church. Okay, let's meet when you have time. When do you have time? Friday. And strangely, my Friday, my, cast, my uh, ministry uh, things got canceled. So I had this huge slot. And I met her. And then she's crying a little bit. And she's tearing. And then she's telling me everything that's going on. Nothing's working. Like all my studies not working. And then I, I follow the word of God. And I want to do this for evangelism, for missions. And she's really mission-minded. She really has a heart for the gospel. But nothing's working. And I said, are you doing the 21? What is this 21? But she only listens to the Sunday's message. She doesn't understand the flow of God's word right now. Then, what's going on in your life? Strangely, I want to have a boyfriend. What drama are you watching? Yeah, that sun thing, you know, tell, tell, so. no wonder. <laughs> I would want a girlfriend too if I watched that, right? And why are you sad? Things are not taking place. I was just constantly saying that. And then I shared that day's message. I shared Sunday's message. And then she realized, ah. Oh. And I share the other testimony of what's going on in my world and my ministry. And I said, Pastor Dave, that's what I'm missing. I'm not reading the big flow. It's easy. Just go back to the number one thing. It is finished. Friday night service was fun for me. You know why? Pastor Iggy Moon, he's one of the new pastors. He got ordained recently. He said this, God's desire for you is not evangelism. God's plan is evangelism, yes. God's goal is evangelism, yes. But God's desire for you is not evangelism. You know what it is? He just wants you. He wants you to know Christ so he can use you to shine the light of Christ. But it's not for you to evangelize people. When I tell people this, people misunderstand. Some people say, you know, you should share the gospel. I tell them, don't share the gospel. Think about the gospel. Think about sharing the gospel. Pray about the gospel. Pray with the gospel for that person. Strangely, one day, you're going to see, ah, oh, Pastor Dave, that's what he meant. If I keep thinking about it, one day that person is going to seek you out. And that person won't bother you anymore. That person actually will look very, very sorry. But then you don't want to say, oh, I feel sorry for you. It's like, oh, I want to help them, but how? And then you're going to remember God's word. Right? If you remember God's word and pray with God's word, guess what? Who works? The Holy Spirit. What comes down, and you can see it come down, the kingdom of God comes down. That person changes. That person that on Friday that I met, she was really kind of a little bit depressed. She kind of hit the bottom, but not very well. I can actually see when people hit the bottom very well. Well, that person really is hitting the bottom. I'm still waiting for people to hit the bottom, some of you. You know, some of you don't hit the bottom very well. But it's okay. I'm not, I'm not wishing, God, please, please <laughs> let Pastor Brett hit the bottom. You know, I don't wish that, you know. That's just me, you know. Jaron right now is not here because why? He's physically hit the bottom. He's so big and strong. Right? I'm teasing Jaron because he's not here. You know, Jaron, he usually does a PPT, right? He's super strong. You see his muscles? He's like kind of bumpy. But guess what? A tiny little virus called Korea and you know just dust from China is bringing him down he's like coughing and dying uh, right it's really and of course there's other stresses and things but a lot of people unseen to our eyes are very weak why physically yes but not that's not the reason is it mentally in their heart yes that's what they have depression and all the confusion whatever yes but it's beyond that it's spiritually 
what is the real problem then? If these people and all of you and your field, you can actually see what the real problem is. They're not where they're supposed to be. All mankind is created after God's image. Then, where are they supposed to be? They're supposed to be in Christ. And always. Why? In Christ, there is no problem. You know how you get rid of slavery? In Christ. Think about it. You want me to quote Abraham Lincoln? Abraham Lincoln only quoted Galatians 3.18. Was it 28? Yeah, that all people are equal in Christ. It's not a big deal. You know how George Mueller received all the answers in the world for himself and really he did missions too. He found all the prayer topics and confirmed all the prayer topics in Christ, in the Word of God. Do you know how Fanny Crosby wrote all the great songs in the world? In Christ, in God's Word. Do you know how, I know people don't like Rockefeller, but Rockefeller really, he loved listening, not just to his mom's words, but really, he loved God's Word. To the point of what? He went to church really one hour before. He gave the most tithes. <laughs> there was like hundreds of people counting the money that he had that he gave to church. Did he really set up all the churches, all the universities? He's still known as a person richer than anybody in the world. If you compare to the money now, he still is the richest man. Then what kind of answer? Where does it where does this answer come from? Is in Christ. How valuable is Christ then? Remember, some of you think this, oh, in Christ then everything is going to go well. I'm going to get a wife, I'm going to be healthy, I'm going to get all the good things. Wrong. You don't need those things. In Christ is everything. Do you need to be smart? You don't have to be smart. God can use Peter. Do you really need to be dumb? No, God can use Paul. But what's Paul always saying? In the Lord, right? In Christ, always. Then, where is your assurance? You know what assurance actually means, right? As sure as can be. That's what it means. The short version of the word meaning is you're so sure. You can stake your life because you're so sure. Is there anything that you're so sure? Are you sure there's air here? It's not a very good air. Then, if you see air, then why can't you see air in the space, right? Because you can't see air. You cannot see the very important things. But are you sure you are breathing air? Right? How do you know? Are you sure that when you call somebody to the States and you're actually talking to your mom, are you sure that's your mom? What is this? It's faith then, right? We're breathing in faith. We're calling people in faith and we believe that that's them. We believe that if we work, we get paid. If we get an education, things go better. We believe and we have assurance. We believe the military will protect us, right? We believe our family is so important, but it's all assurances. Then, what about the assurance of Christ? We don't have that much. That's why Philippians 4.13 says this. While Paul was in prison, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. That means the important part is this. His current address is where? In Christ. Whether in prison, house arrest, whether he's free, whether he's in a boat that's about to be destroyed, he's in Christ. So do you have problems? Are you worried? You're worried? Why? Because you're worried in Genesis 3, 6, and 11. Because of me, myself, and I, physical things, my success, my fame, right? Oh, I was actually thinking that this person was not going to watch it as soon as possible, but I did. I was, the first person I always ask for cultural things is, did you watch Avengers? Because you know, I want to know what happens, right? Because everybody says it's fun. And I want to stay in track, too. Plus, it's, you know, it's my age. I, I grew up with all these kind of things. But I don't need to watch because I don't have time to watch Avengers. So I, I figure uh, he's going to watch it right away. So I was asking him, and he says, no, I didn't watch. But then that was yesterday morning. And guess what? At night, he watched it. <laughs> but that's OK. And still, I, I'll ask what happened. But I already know the content. Guess what? The culture 
Is it Christ? No. Some things are good, but it's not Christ. That's why it's full of what? Fortune telling, magic, idolatry, just full of shamanism. And it all acts good, but in reality, it's all tied to what? Darkness, chaos, and void. And the individual, the more you try things in this world, we're still stuck under Satan. We're still stuck. Slaves in a religious system. We're still stuck. Spiritually afflicted, mentally afflicted, physically afflicted. Our children get afflicted. Our families are breaking apart. And we die and go to hell. That's the individual destruction. What and who? How? When? Do we receive the salvation? As always, in Christ. That's it. The greatest blessing that we have right now, and we're giving everything in Christ, then all you need to do is what? Confirm. It's kind of funny because um, Pastor Shogo right now and Pastor uh, Suryo, uh, Assistant Pastor Suryo, they're in New York. And Joanna Nishimoto, some of you may know who she is. Uh, Pastor Shogo and Joanna, Joanna was recently called me. Uh, she goes, they were in a camp, they were in, she's in training, and some, a lot of people are in training right now. And they went to a field, and as soon as they go to a park, remember I told you Joanna is receiving answers as much as she can, because she's trying to ride the flow. And so this young, you know, remnant Joanna, uh, I'm sorry, I'm using her, she's not going to watch this little morning. <laughs> but um, she goes, pray for me, Pastor Dave, because Pastor Shogo scolded me. Why? You know, what's wrong with Pastor Shogo? <laughs> right? And then there's a reason why. Because she led someone to Christ. And I told Joanna, Joanna, there's people like you. No, there's not. Right? Because she's mixed, Jamaican and Japanese. You know, and she's very pretty too. She's, and she, you know, got hurt. She was supposed to be an athlete, but she got hurt. So she kind of didn't have a very you know, normal background as growing up because you know, she only focused on athletics. Anyway, there's nobody like me. And I said, no, there's tons of people like you. And then she goes to NYU, she meets a Brazilian Japanese girl, <laughs> just like her. And her name is Anna. She shares the gospel, she accepts Christ. And then she meets her a little bit, and then she gives up on her because she's not strong enough. Joanna, not her. Guess what? Guess what they meet while with Pastor Shogo, right? He's going with her to show that evangelism takes place, and people are prepared. They meet her again. Anna, for a long time, she didn't meet her. And they share the gospel. Pastor Shogo shared the gospel. She really loves this gospel. And then she's willing to do all the mo word movement tarapan again. And they do it. And then who's the problem then? I, I always pray for Joanna and a lot of people in, in EM and all, around the world. But who's the problem? It's Joanna. It's not Anna. It's Joanna. <laughs> then her prayer topic is right for the filling of the Holy Spirit for continuation. It's not hard, but then, here's something that a lot of people, not just Joanna, are saying, I believe, but I don't. Right? You know what that sounds like? No assurance. But you know how I know that people are not believing very well? I'm like that too. So, whose child am I? My father, physically? Yes. But, in Christ, whose child am I? God, right? So, remember that example I gave you before? That we have Yebin in the back, right? Whose child is Yebin's? Tony and Gia's. But you know what Yebin is going to do? She's just going to always confirm that Tony and Gia are the parents. So, that's assurance. Who's your daddy? Who's your mommy? then what evidences do you have? Everything is yours in Christ. Right? Then why are you shaking? No evangelism? No way! You changed the world. That means God's greatest blessing, the image of God is restored in you, and you get to conquer and save the world. Do you have financial problems? Does God your Father not know? Do you have physical problems? Does God not know? Are you young, old? Does God not know? Do you live in a different country? Do you have a mixed marriage? Does God not know? God prepared all the answers in Christ. 
That's why he gave us his word. Then, confirm this fact, truth, and spiritual reality that in Christ is everything. That he finished everything, he gave you everything, and Christ is enough. You can actually hear his voice. And that's why it's called the heavenly mandate. You can actually do the real right things. You know what the right thing is? It's to save people instead of kill people. The real thing is now for you to now, because you're in Christ, you're one with Christ. Not only Christ, God the Father and the Holy Spirit. And if Christ is really Christ, does he leave you alone? Somebody said this, actually one of your sisters said this, nobody's there to help me. She sent me a call, call message this morning. I'm like, and I, I put a question mark, like, what do you mean? Nothing, never mind. But she always forgets what? 24 hour, God is with you. God wants to work through his word. But then I struggle the same way. Right now the Nepalese people are not here. Wow, it's not easy taking care of Nepalese people. You know why? Is Nepalese country developed? No way. Who persecutes Nepalese people a lot inside and outside? The outside? India. Sorry, India. <laughs> but wow, it's bad. You know, you know who fights with Af Africans the most? It's not the white people. Africans fight with African people, each other, even within a, their own country. So, think about this. Where do we get all our hope, strength, all our faith, all our love, all our answers and healing? In Christ. Why would you want to commit suicide if you're in Christ? You would never do that. But if you're deceived, you can. That's why you can actually heal people too. How? In Christ. So you don't have to fake it. I hate fake forms. Sorry. We did that so many times. I did that so many times. Nowadays, I try not to. I just say, you know, I don't want to hear this and I just go away or use the bathroom. But then the real forms, <laughs> actually, I stand. You know, sometimes, you know, on the base, we have forums. Now, Tony wasn't there. It's a good thing Tony wasn't there because. We had a military base forum. And then, sorry, Jacob. But Jacob, wow, he was just sharing. It was like you know, a sermon and a half. But me and this other person, his boss was listening. And like we're thinking, his boss is not going to share much. Because he shared everything. He shared the entire thing about his life, his, his business, and the military base too. But then, it seemed like it was nothing, but it was really sincere. So I'm thinking, oh, there's hope. <laughs> there's hope for this base. Why? Because Jacob's there. So I was like, wow. But other people that are not interested in the gospel, why is he sharing so long? Right? But then, because you don't have the gospel, it's really boring. If you have the gospel, wow. Great hope. Everywhere. That's why number one thing is this. Just understand that everything is in Christ. Look at Ephesians 1.3. Blessed be the God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. That means nothing can be taken away from you. In Christ, everything is there. Right? Then, the number one thing for you to do is this. Know your salvation is 100%. It's not lacking. Even if you die without getting married, without having children, without getting paid, you're saved. Even if you do something bad right now, as soon as you apply the blood, who saves you? Whose child are you? You receive the righteousness of Christ. That means, how much did you disbelieve? How much did you not understand God's gospel? Doesn't matter. If you apply the blood, 100% you're saved. Why? 1 John 5, 11, 13. Who gave you this eternal life? It was God. If you just receive this life, that means the Son. You now, you know why you're confused? Because you don't know what this life is. You don't know what's this in Christ. In Christ means you're saved from what? Death. Death cannot work in you. Curses cannot work in you. So stop thinking curse. You know, hell cannot work in you. You're supposed to break down the powers of hell. So you don't have to pretend to be like Batman or you know Superman or you know the fashionist or whatever. You don't have to do any of these things. 
You don't have to copy the world. Why? You're assured in salvation. Life is inside of you. Eternal life. And if it's eternal life, then guess what? For those that receive him, believe in his name, he gave the right to become what? Children of God. That's your assurance. You're a child of God. No matter black, yellow, red, red, green, no matter what color, what culture, what language, doesn't matter. You know what I like about EM now? We really look like the church. Before it was just full of, you know, just kyopos and, you know, Korean Americans or just, you know, uh, white guys or whatever. And very few international people came. But now, we look like English ministry. Why? This is how it's supposed to be. You know, we're supposed to get, it's okay. We can even have gangsters coming. We can have people that have drug problems, mental problems. It doesn't matter. You know, anybody can come. As long as they can understand some English. <laughs> but even if you don't understand English, you can still come. And they do. <laughs> Why? As long as you have the blessing of in Christ and you're saved, strangely you can understand. That's why the blessing of what? Confessing Jesus is the Christ, that He died and resurrected, and He is the Savior, and He's the Lord, that's ours. Romans 10, 9 to 10 says that. That's why anybody that calls the name of the Lord is saved. And Revelation 3.20, I'm going to explain this very well to you. It's not for non-believers. It's for Christians. Jesus Christ stands at the door and still wants to come in. Why? We live him. We leave Christ out every single day. When we watch movies, when we hang out with people, don't leave him out. When you go to the bathroom, Christ goes with you. When you watch a movie, even if there's something kind of bad, even if you're thinking bad, Christ is with you. Why? To do the work of salvation. It's 100% secure. Pastor, you actually mentioned Eddie. Ah, I don't know why he keeps doing that, but now that he mentioned it, now I can use him. Eddie is a very good friend of Pastor Sam and myself, but I thought Eddie, he works in Wall Street. It's kind of not good that I'm talking about him, but I'm not mentioning his last name, so it's okay. But he's super busy. But you know what he said? And this is not from the horse's mouth. Actually, this is from many people's mouth that, that he said it. You know what he said, which I still don't understand? He's like, this is Eddie? Eddie said this? He said this. He really comes to Korea and he's super busy. He receives training and goes back to New York because he's working Wall Street. But he says this, I come to Korea because I believe in the spiritual reality, the spiritual world. But when I meet him, he still acts the same. Same, same Eddie as before. I don't see any changes. But you know what he does? This is what I heard from the people that train him. He actually takes a boat ride to Manhattan and he deeply meditates on God's word, prays. While deeply breathing too. Because he knows. And anytime he meets an important client, he prays for their salvation and prays for God's plan. And it always goes well. Even if there's a problem, he 100% believes in God's sovereignty and God's word. And so he stopped receiving stress. That's what I heard. Before he was always stressed out because all the Jewish people controlled everything. He was so angry at Jewish people. He's not angry anymore. He wants to save them. Then, what happened? He realized John 5, 24. He believes Jesus Christ. He crossed over from death to life. That means death cannot work around you. You block disasters. Why is disaster coming? Because people do not know Christ. That's the assurance of Christ that we must have. It's 100%. You got to check, confirm. And if that's the case, if it's Christ, does he stop just being Christ and he saved us, period? No. He continues to save us because why? Salvation is still at work through our lives. That means he answers our prayer. What kind of prayer? Until now you have not asked anything in my name. That means who is Jesus? Jesus means God is salvation. But who is Jesus and what does he do? He does the work of Christ. You know how we pray? We don't pray in his name. We do pray in Jesus' name, amen, but we don't mean it. If we do pray in the gospel, inside of God's plan and goal, God answers us, absolutely. But most of us still pray, where? In Genesis 3, 6, and 11, religiously. That's why we need to have assurance 
in this Christ as we pray. Right? Then, what happens? Oh, same thing. John 14, 14. Right? Ask in my name and I'll give it to you. John 15, 7. If you're in me, ask. Right? If my words are in you, ask. It will be given to you. Right? Then, 1 John 5, 14. If it's, my, if it's according to God's will, it will be given to you. Right? But most people don't know God's will. That's what Jeremiah 33, 3. Call to me. I'll answer you. I give you all the answers that you don't know. It's unseen to our eyes. But God is all prepared to give to all, all of us that really ask in Christ. That's why Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Stop worrying. Stop being anxious. But in everything, with thanksgiving. Why? He's already at work in Christ. Pray to Him. That's why Revelation 8, 3 to 5. Who picks up our prayers and answers us? Angels too. And also, it's not here, but First Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18. We always rejoice. We always give thanks. Why? Because we pray without ceasing. Because God answers all the time. 24 hours a day. So, if you need to learn something from Pastor Yu, it's not Pastor Yu. It's actually from God. It's prayer 24. Why? God is awake 24 hours a day. And He works beyond our time and space, which is 25. For what? eternal answers <coughs> then what do we need in our lives in your job in your family in the military in every situation we need assurance of guidance in Christ that's it you come to Korea for this reason you go and work for money for people sure that can take place but now the real answer you really need guidance in Christ then trust him with all your heart don't lean on your understanding in all your ways acknowledge him right acknowledge God the gospel and what does he do everything in your past that was no good that was junk he will make your past straight you like you know MMA fighting don't worry he will make your past straight to save those people too it's like oh you know what you have to quit just quit those bad things that destroys you but other things that you like, it's okay. You like games, you're gonna save all the people that play games. You know, you like doing some crazy weird things, but as long as it doesn't kill other people and doesn't kill you, it's okay. God uses everything. Like the person that made, you know, Kim Gisa, the navigation, he's our member. Now it's no longer Kim Gisa. It's actually, you know what it is, right? Kakao, Don bought it. Now it's a huge program, it's bigger than ever. But guess what? He made so much money. Well, how does he use the money and the navigation? To save people. Then, same thing. Our navigation in our world, in our life, is who? In Christ. By the Holy Spirit. So you, don't, you can't complain with Christ. I can't complain. I used to complain about God. God, why did you send me to Korea? I hate Korea. Right? I can't. Why? God changed everything for me. Because I received really the greatest blessings in Christ in Korea. Then, understanding that, you understand that the Holy Spirit is with you, comforting, counseling you, and sh He's going to show you everything. That's what John 14, also John 15 says that too, John 16. Those chapters really talk about the Holy Spirit the best. And 1 John 2, 7, 27, you lacking something? Don't worry. He anointed you. Anointed you in Christ. That means the Holy Spirit is inside of you. He'll show you everything. He's, so you don't know something? There's someone that knows everything. He's the greatest dictionary, encyclopedia, and navigation. In Christ. Right? So ask. Seek. Then, you're going to have true victory. Assurance of victory. Even without fighting, you're always going to be victorious. Even if you lose, you still win. Right? You have a disease. You have financial problems. You have families that are struggling so much. You're always going to have victory. That's why it says this. You know, 1 Corinthians 10, 13 is very easy to explain. No temptation has seized you but what is common to man. That means everybody else is struggling, right? But you're not struggling. Why? Because you see God's way out. God's provision. To do what? To stand under it. That means you stand victorious. Even though you're actually... It's like this. 
Why stand under it? Because why? All the problems are falling everybody, right? But you're okay, right? It's like an earthquake swallowed everybody up, but you're under something that actually protected you. No matter what calamity, disaster, you're in Christ. Does that make sense? You're in Christ. So if you're in Christ, it's like the ark, a flood from bottom and top. It can't hit you. You just float. If that's the case, what victory against all forces of darkness? Luke 10, 19. Nothing will harm you. Why did God call you? So that He can be with you. Why do we have victory all the time? He is with you. Mark 3, 13 to 15. He called you to be with you and He gave you authority. And you can preach all the words that He gives to you. How? Oh, because no matter what, this word is living. It will heal people. It will save people. Even today, Tani is not here. No, she's not here. But she brought her another friend. Her name is Tan too. And she's not. She didn't know the gospel. She accepted Christ today. She's running around doing homework right now. But it's really weird. But people are coming to Christ. Why? Because God. That's His goal to save people. And all of us, as much as we can, just really enjoy our life. All the blessing is given to us because we're children of God and we overcome Satan and the evil one. Because we believe Jesus. <laughs> That's weird, huh? Believing Jesus, we win. Are you sure? You gotta know this. That's the number 121. Calvary is finished. Death, Satan, curses, every disaster is finished. Then, what do you have? But I'm so messed up. Don't worry. This Christ forgave you past, present, and future. He is Christ forever. Then, 1 John 1, 7 to 9, 7 and 9. If you sin, He knows you. You don't have to lie to God. He knows you very well. And He already called you righteous. But what happens if you mess up? He'll cleanse you. You just got to turn back to Him. I told you what sin is, right? Sin means missing the mark. You know, Christians still sin. You know why? They're not where they're supposed to be. They're not in Christ. That's why Christians are always sinning. That's why the fault of the world and the disasters of the world. People are waiting to be saved, but we can't save them. Why? It's Christians' fault. Why? Because we're not where we're supposed to be. We're always missing the mark. That's why we repent. That's why we ask for forgiveness. He cleanses us and makes us right. And if that's the case, we realize it is all finished in Christ. That cross, past, present, and future, every problem is solved. I don't have to worry. And I can receive healing, and it's once and for all, there's no condemnation. I am set free from all the law of sin and death. Here's the conclusion then. 21 starts in Christ, but actually, 21 starts in only Christ, Calvary. Because only Christ died at the cross and resurrected, right? So if you really think about 21, 21, I told you what it is, right? It's just the confession of our faith. You know, starting from Calvary, Mount of Olives, Mark's Upper Room. That means only Christ, only God's kingdom, only the Holy Spirit for what? His filling and his guidance and his working for world transition. Then we can hear God's voice. Ah, oh, then we know why we're called here in Korea, where we are. We know what our mission is. Even and I can't do what you do. Only you can do that. You only you can save your next generation too. That's why just do what's rightful in Christ. Just do what's necessary in Christ. Do what's absolute in Christ. Then how can we do it? In Christ, you're one. That's our method. That means only. In Christ is so unique that no one can take it away. The kingdom of God. In Christ, all the power and the works of recreation. People change to be new. I, some, you know, some of you may know this person, a person that um, I helped out a long time ago. She dances, but she's not supposed to, she's a dancing teacher. She's not supposed to change, but we still wonder what happened to her. But it was always Christ. She's leading a lot of her students to Christ right now. She's even thinking about regional church. I'm like, 
You don't even understand team ministry. How can you think of original church? <laughs> but it's always in Christ. Why? Because she's really enjoying what answer? Uh, 24, 25, eternity. She's only enjoying one. And her prayer is this, to change what's imprinted, rooted in nature. And she's still young. But she has a better prototype than me, it seems like. Then, without assurance, what happens? We fall under Satan's snares and traps and live deceived. How deceived? To the point, some people go crazy. Still, as Christians. First Peter 5, 7-9. You have to cast all your cares to God. Because He loves you and He cares for you. Or else, Satan knows what you're doubting, what you're afraid, what you're worried. And he is probably looking for someone to devour. But if you just resist him because you're in Christ, he will run away from you. Then, assurance is confirming what you received. Making so sure and concrete because what God has given us is guaranteed in his word. So if it's guaranteed in God's word, what do you have to do? Imprint God's word. Overall, God's word, rooted in. And be natured in God's word. That's what we pray and we relay God's word. That means God's word has all the answers. There's nothing lacking. I know um, some of us uh, are struggling. Don't worry. Have assurance. Some of us see other people struggling. You can help them. It's not hard. I'll just tell you. I really didn't like helping people that are seeing demons and you know mentally ill, depressed people. It makes me depressed. But now I've done it enough so that well, no problem. God guides, God's guide. You know, He always guides me, and then people actually receive healing to the point where like I'm I'm amazed. And all I did was just share God's word and make the word go in. Sometimes I spent three hours just praising and you know reading God, God's word together, watching a video together with them concerning the gospel, and. Here's something that all people say. It's not coincidence. This problem and God's word. Slowly that coincidence that they thought it was just an accident and coincidence became what? Assurance. Because they checked. And for them, there's no coincidence. And I, they struggle again. Then I remind them, is today's word and your problem coincidence? And they always say, this, no. Why? It fits them. It's just they didn't put it in. And once they wait with God's word, God's kingdom comes. And everybody sees it. And that's evangelism. It's easy. Let's pray together and really apply God's word today. It is true.